during a time where trying out the new games would be done through receiving some demo discs from the mail from a magazine subscription in the late 90s long before Epic Store, Steam, or even downloading games from the internet was a thing. So this is PC Accelerator, aka PC Excel. This is Landrider 7th, aka LR7, Land here. And for the past two decades, I have hold these demo discs with me, while in some cases, I let my dad hold on to them, even though he will never touch those discs ever. And from what you see here, these are the, the ones that I actually rescued from a house fire, where my dad's place went on fire and everything got lost and somehow these discs survived the fire and so I ended up uh, taking them home with me as well as some other things from my past. At a time where I couldn't purchase the full versions back when I was still in elementary school when these discs first released and getting a job was completely out of my limits at the time. Although I never really got to play every single one of these games and purchase all the discs however these demos was the closest thing to having a full collection of games that were exclusive to the PC and some other titles that you can probably find on other consoles for its time and so we're gonna rip these discs and put them into ISOs so we can run them inside the virtual machine as well as an actual Windows PC because soon or later these discs will stop working and could deteriorate so I'll be using PCEM in order to run these demo discs on an actual Windows 95 operating system that I have here and so we're going to run some of these games while I talk about some history behind PC Accelerator. It was an American personal computer game magazine that was published by Imagine Media, currently a subsidiary of Future Inc. Founded in 1994 at a privately held company headquarters in Brisbane, California, they produced marketing leading print magazines and web communities that focus on business, computing, electronic entertainment, and the internet. Its eight print magazines include Business 2.0, Game Buyer, Mac Attic, Maximum PC, Next Generation, PSM, and even PC Gamer. PC Excel was known for its humor that catered to mostly male gamers and its suggestive photography. They announced the launch on September of 1998 when the first issue was published the same month and the magazines are published on a monthly basis aimed at an emerging generation of hardcore PC gamers. The magazine has nationwide distribution through affiliation with Curtis Circulation Imagine is able to guarantee an initial audit of 100,000 readers for the new magazine. They claim to define the emerging accelerated PC game market in the infancy and guide its very enthusiastic sector of the game market into the year 2000. PC gamers can now experience the gameplay once exclusive to console gamers but with better graphics and sound. Games were typically reviewed on a scale of 0 to 10. Half-Life was the only game to receive an 11 in the February 1999 issue. Led by longtime Ultra Game Players editor Mike Salman, he states, Rarely in the magazine business does an editor get to create a magazine aimed specifically at their demographic, but also a member of its target audience. PC Accelerator is about games and the people who play them. They strike an immediate following with gamers, giving them a magazine that speaks their language. By June of 2000, PC Accelerator closes its doors after its last issue was released with a budget.
black cover with text saying it's over. After nearly two years in circulation, according to the magazine's editor-in-chief, Mike Salman, in response to the shrinking PC market that is the culprit of PC Excel's demise, currently, the PC Accelerator staff is wrapping up the June issue, which will be in the magazine's last. The survival of the magazine leveled out to over 100,000 readers and couldn't bring more in. The only source of income for PC Excel was advertising dollars and to decide whether or not advertisers are going to buy ad pages. Unfortunately, the content of the magazine has been kept out of large chains like Walmart and were competing in a tough niche market with not only computer gaming world but PC Gamer. Their market share was not growing enough for advertisers to place ads in the magazine and the negative reaction from readers had a situation where it's nearly impossible to turn a profit to continue on. After the split up of the magazine, editor-in-chief Mike Salman went on to start the official Xbox magazine. While some of the staff was sent to PC Gamer, others went on to work for Daily Radar and that was the end of PCXL. So it was thought. Out of nowhere, in September of 2007, a special fall issue was released to newsstands only as this issue was primarily written by the current staff of PC Gamer with contributions by formal PC XL staff, including Rob Smith and Dan Egger. So, as far as I'm aware, there hasn't been anything else from PCXL, and I'm afraid that it's gonna be like this now that it's possible to simply go to a website and just download the games without waiting a month or two for the new demos to release or you can go to the official websites if their game is available or you can even use something like Steam and Epic Store or any others out there so as far as I'm aware we'll never see another magazine publisher like this ever again as everything is going solely digital marking an end of an era and the beginning of a new one so that aside i just wanted to talk about this for quite some time but never got around until much much later and i do have fond memories about trying out these demos and also the times when i was living in a very different place at a very different time and seeing how obscured these demos are i decided to archive them or better yet i brought it to somebody that can archive them for me and she did a very awesome job preserving these demos in which are now available in the archives so when you have the chance you can check them out and play the games for yourself as I wasn't able to play everything and to show it on this video so you should thank Enigmatic for making the ISO images accessible so they can be run on either actual hardware and if you don't have such then you can run it on a virtual machine and go from there. Till then, this is LR7 sharing a piece of PC gaming history and 